I don't know about you, but the recent winter weather has had me dreaming of warm weather and garden harvest. And it's hard to believe that it's almost time to start seeds and get back out into the soil. Seed starting is something that many gardeners just intuitively know they want to do. We decide we want to start a garden, we buy seeds and soil, and just get started. And in some cases this works, but in other cases, failures with these initial seed starts can discourage us from further growing. In this episode, I wanna guide you through my decision-making process and the steps I use when starting seeds um, so that maybe your baby seedlings can grow into productive, mature plants. Welcome to the Garden Things with Friends podcast. We're here to show that building a thriving garden is possible for everyone, even those with busy schedules and long to-do lists. I'm Ashley, your host, and two years ago, I turned my garden dreams into reality in my suburban backyard. Through trial and error over the next two seasons, I've created a thriving garden that I absolutely love. My goal is to inspire you to create your dream garden too. So let's grow together. So this episode is a real-time episode, meaning as I'm sharing with you the contents, I'm also doing the task. It's the middle of January here, and I'm about 11 weeks from my estimated last frost date, and I'm probably 13 weeks from when we're typically in the clear with the cool weather. So that means I can start looking at starting my cool weather crops in the next couple of weeks. This is exciting, but I'm also reminded of the season I started my garden and how overwhelming seed starting felt. I want to help you avoid that feeling, so this episode will be complete with all of the information I would have loved to know before starting my own process. So first things first, let's talk about what seed starting is and why seed starting is important. So seed starting is the process of growing plants from seeds rather than purchasing mature plants from a nursery or garden center. It involves planting the seeds in a controlled environment such as indoors or in a greenhouse until they're ready to be transplanted into your garden. Starting your own seeds has many benefits. It allows you to have more control over what varieties of plants you grow. So rather than being limited to what is available at your local garden center, you get to choose your own. It also allows for a longer growing season as you're transplanting more mature plants in the ground versus starting from seed outdoors after your frost date. Additionally, seed starting can save you money, especially if you're growing a significant amount of each crop. Transplants from a big box stores are expensive and prices are rising. Starting your seeds helps you save money and potentially gain healthier plants in the long run. Okay, now let's talk supplies. Seed starting doesn't have to be an expensive endeavor. In fact, you can begin with just a bag of seed starting mix and containers you have around your house in a sunny window. I'm a huge proponent of growing where you are and using what you have. Even still, there are a few things that can make seed starting much more convenient. Here are some of the essentials. Seed starting mix. You can use potting soil, but seeds don't require a lot of nutrients prior to germination. For containers, you can find some great seed starting trays at any of the big box stores. I like a super seed tray from Burpee. They're silicone. You can use labels, a grow light, heating mat, Large container for bottom watering, a table fan can help with hardening off plants, spray bottle, watering can. Now, aside from soil and a grow light, all of the other items are optional or can be substituted for things around your home. Now, let's talk about methods of starting seeds. There are four basic ways to start seeds. They are the traditional method using seed trays, winter sowing, which I'll be discussing next week, Soil blocking, which has been popularized in the last few years, and my personal favorite, hydroponics. Now, I want to spend a little time going through each method in more detail. We'll start with the traditional seed starting method. This method is what most of us will start out with. It's really simple and only requires seed starting mix, a container, and grow lights. Now, while grow lights are optional, they increase success tenfold. Now with this method, you will choose and prepare your container. And if you're using seed trays, there's no preparation needed. If you're using a recycled container, make sure you have proper drainage. 
then you'll moisten your soil. You want the soil to clump together when held in your fist, but you don't want to be able to squeeze water out of it. Then you'll fill your container. You'll place your seeds, two to three um, in each seed starting tray, or if you're using a container, you can slightly overseed. Then you'll place this under a grow light and wait, and you'll water as needed. Once germination has occurred, you will pot up and transplant outside. Now let's talk about the next method, and that is going to be soil blocking. Now soil blocking involves creating soil blocks that you use instead of containers to start your seeds. Now this is a method that I thought I was going to dive right into, but it ended up being more technique specific than I originally thought. It also does require a little of investment to purchase the soil block maker. So my experience with this is gonna be limited, but there are some pretty intriguing benefits. And those benefits include not having to use containers. Um, and then the roots, they air prune, which basically is they stop growing when they hit the edge of the block. This generally or is said to lead to healthier transplants. And then you can stack these much tighter because you don't have the containers under your grow lights. Now I may try my hand at soil blocking again because the idea of air pruning does seem like a benefit I'd like to capitalize on. If you have experience with it, I would love to hear about it. Message me in the comments below. Now this next method does require an investment, especially if you do not already own a hydroponic growing system, but it is my absolute favorite. Hydroponics is a method of growing plants in water. And once I began using my arrow garden to start my plants, I was sold. Now I can't speak for other hydroponic systems, so I'll just speak about the arrow garden. They do have a way to convert all of their hydroponic systems into a seed starting hydroponic system. Basically, you purchase a kit that increases the amount of growing cones you can use. Mine goes from a six cell unit to a 23 cell unit. Once you have this kit, you can start nearly any seed and then transplant it into the soil once you have one or two sets of true leaves. Last year, I ran a little experiment where I started peppers in the traditional seed tray method and the arrow garden. The arrow garden pepper starts germinated in two weeks for the traditional month method. It took nearly a month and a half or never germinated at all. Now, I do understand that this method has a higher initial cost and maintenance costs. However, I use rock wool instead of the growing cones and the overall cost is so much lower. The last method that I want to discuss is one that I'm going to be working on for the first time this year, and that is winter sowing. Winter sowing is a method where you create these mini greenhouses with seeds in them, and then you let mother nature drive germination. When the soil gets warm enough for germination to occur, the seeds germinate. One of the benefits that I am most excited about for this method is the fact that as someone who is time and space limited, the idea of a hands-off approach to seed starting is so exciting. Now, this method has the added benefit of better acclimation due to the fact that plants are already in the elements. My research says you can winter sow anything, and here is a list of plants that I plan on winter sowing. Kale, kohlrabi, lettuce, cabbage, arugula, spinach, Swiss chard, calendula, bachelor buttons, pansies, hollyhocks, and nasturtium. Winter sowing might be the perfect solution for someone who is newer to gardening and looking for a low-cost method of seed starting. So now you've chosen the method, when are we supposed to start our seeds? If you're using winter sowing, you can start nearly any time in late fall I'm talking mid-December and throughout the winter. If you're using one of the other methods, you'll want to consider your estimated last frost date. This will vary by crop and even by variety. Generally speaking though, here are some guidelines for your seed starting timeline. Alliums will be the first thing you will want to start in early January if possible. Perennial and cool weather herbs will be next. You can start succession planting things like lettuce and arugula and kale at about 10 weeks before your last frost date. These will be able to go out into the soil before your last frost date. The next set of vegetables you'll start are your cool crops like cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower. 
and this is going to be eight to 10 weeks before your frost date. Tomatoes and peppers come next at about six weeks before your last frost date. Finally, you'll start any flowers and annual herbs like basil at four weeks before your estimated last frost date. As always, I cannot stress this enough, please read the back of each individual seed packet because it will tell you exactly when to start. And if you're not sure when your last frost date is, we did a complete guide to frost dates in episode two. I'll link that in the show notes below. Okay, y'all, this has been a long episode and I promised myself when I started this podcast that I would keep the information bite-sized. So we're gonna have to do a part two. And in that episode, I'll talk about some of the common problems we see when seed starting as well as some steps that we should not skip when choosing to start our own seeds. I hope this episode has shed some light on the ways to seed start and given you some encouragement to give seed starting a try. If you dug this episode, I would be honored if you would rate this podcast and spread the word to your friends who are also passionate about gardening. Your five-star support fuels the growth of Garden Things with Friends and together, will cultivate a network of thriving gardens and plant-loving friends. Happy gardening, and remember, it's never the wrong time to grow where you are.